With me today, I have a special, special guest. Brother Edwin Caes is a member of my church, a young man that loves the Lord Jesus Christ. But at one time in his life, he didn't love God. As a matter of fact, he hated God. And I'm going to let Edwin share with you these words. Now, before he begins, I just want to say this real quick. The devil is a liar. And there's two things that the devil tries. There are two ways the devil tries to de uh, deceive people. One way is to give him too much attention. And the other way is to ignore him completely. And we want to have a balance here today. And we're going to speak about something that he went through in his life. Brother Edwin Caes was a, a, a Satanist for 12 years. For 12 years, this man served the devil. And uh, as a young man, and I, I just want to introduce to you Brother Edwin Caes. I want him to share with you his experience in that world of darkness and how he came out of that. And, uh, you know, a lot of things that he went through, a lot of our young people and our children are going through. And, I, and if you're a parent, I want you to listen very carefully. Uh, and if you're a young person and you've been delving with, with the occult, I want you to listen because uh, this is something that you need to hear. Edwin, welcome to Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Edwin, uh, I want you to share with us a little bit of uh, your experience. I understand that uh, at 12 years old, you started delving into the occult. Is that true? Yes, Pastor. Um, I had a, a cousin that just, he, was, he, was a good, he was a nice person. He was a good man, but uh, he used to like the, uh, the spiritual games, uh, divination, he, uh, all that stuff about spirits and this and that. He used to like that kind of stuff. And me and him, we used to sit down and, and play games, uh, fortune telling, um, uh, play with candles, play uh, guessing games with cards and, and all this stuff like that. So that's, that's how I started my little spiritual journey. Amen. It was like a game. It was a game, it was, it was uh, a game. Ouija board, yeah. uh, tarot cards, yeah. and you thought it was fun. I mean, they actually sell these things in toy stores. Could Amen. you believe that? Right. Right. And they say that's just a game it's, and, it's, and it's fun. But that started you down a, a very dark path, didn't it? Yes, sir. It sure did. I mean, it, it, it messed up. It messed me up big time because uh, um, I, didn't, I thought it was a game. I thought it was something just for fun. Me and him, we used to do. But that that gave me a like like I told my my mom and my family I always had like this this, this special ability for those things. It came to me easy. Mm -hmm. I mean I learned very quickly as a young kid. Yeah, and, and you started del delving with the occult, not not even knowing it was the occult. Exactly Basically right. just uh, exactly. just uh, playing games and, and, games and having fun. Right. And when did that become satanic? When did you actually how how did you get evolved from just playing games to actually? becoming a Satan worshiper. Well, what happened was we left Puerto Rico in 1975. We came down here to Florida, all right? And, and we, I left the church. I started hanging around the streets with my cousins, with my, fa with my friends and everybody else. And, and by the age of 16, I heard a powerful music that, it, that called my attention. It was, I, I, I tell you the truth, I loved it. When I first heard it, I, I, could, I could tell it was powerful, powerful uh, music. And, and I started, Again, looking into it, uh, researching it, uh, finding out more about it, started buying the magazines. I'm talking about heavy metal. Heavy metal music. Heavy metal music. And, and then w w w my looking into it, researching, playing with it, I found out that the source of that music was Satan. Yeah, the lyrics, the enchantments, yes, the words, yes, it was satanic, and you liked it. Oh, I loved it. I so mean, basically, heavy metal music introduced you to Satanism and its raw firm, f yeah. form. Yes, sir. When I combine my spiritual things, my spiritual games, my spiritual exercises that I learned from my cousin back then with what I started learning from uh, the occult, from, from uh, heavy metal, a whole world opened up for me. Amen. Now, now I want to just go back a little bit because I know a little bit of the, of the background. Uh, you were kind of rebellious against God at that moment in your life, too, because your parents had gotten divorced, right? Yes, sir. And you were, like, angry at God for that breakup I, of, uh, of your parents' uh, marriage. Yes, sir. I hated my mom with a passion. I tried to kill my mother three times. You tried to kill your mom? I tried to kill my when mom. When you were in times. Satanism? Yes, sir. Yeah. I hated my mother. I mean, I despised my mom for what she did. Yeah. I blame my mom and God for everything that, that happened to my life. You know, it's, it's something how, uh, in my church, we have a rehab center. And I've noticed that a lot of the kids that are into drugs and the occult, it's, it's easier for kids to come out of it if their parents, it, for some reason, if their parents are solid. 
But when they come from divorced homes and stuff, it's, it's, it's harder. Um, I, I know there's a lot of pain in that. Sometimes as adults, we don't know how our decisions affect our children. Uh, and, and sometimes we want to live selfish lives, you know. Well, I want to do what feels good, you know. I want to do what feels great. And they don't care about their children. They don't care about the ramifications. Right. And, you know, the Bible says there is pleasure in a sin but for a little while. And sometimes we do things as adults that we don't know how it affects our children. So you, you, you got rebellious. You hated your mom. You hated God. And there it was, heavy metal music, the occult. And you embraced it. At, at what age? I embraced heavy metal around 16. When I, when I realized exactly what I was doing. My, my, my spiritual journey, that's, I, don't, uh, I don't put, give that term, it started when I was 12. But when I get into real, to the real... Um, so, so Satanism. The source of it, Satanism was around 16. You were 16 years old. You know, I, I know Edwin's testimony, and I really don't want to get into too many details. Right. Because there's a lot of stuff there that, you know, I'd rather not talk about. <laughs> you know, I'd rather not hear it. Um, it, it's not edifying. It's not something that I really, really want to want to talk about. But uh, I know the depthness the, it, that you took, the, 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 how how serious you took this Satan worship. You actually uh, started having uh, demonic visitations, and and uh, you started recruiting other young people. Just talk about that a little bit. Well, that was easy. You know, the, when you're young, you want to be loved. You want to have that that group. That fellowship, the belonging. You yeah. want, you want to, you know. We, all of us, we're, we're from broken homes. Either the parent was, one parent was alcoholic or a drug addict. It, it, it was, it was kids from broken homes and, and this and that, you know. And and and, we, like I said, we all need to be like, you know, the fellowship. The, Connected. The, the, yeah. the, well, you want to belong to somebody, right? Well, I mean, uh, my job or my uh, my thing was that I I would tell the kid, hey, listen, there is a better way. There's something more. There's something, you know, there's, there's something fun that we can do. We don't need, we don't need the parents. We don't need nobody. All we need is each other. All right. I would never use the word Satan or Lucifer. I, we used to call him the boss. The boss. The boss. Okay. Right. And the kid would, they would come and, you know, the kids would like the heavy metal. Of course, they like the drugs. Of course, they like the, uh, well, the, the sex part. They, they like the alcoholism. They like all the fun and all the parties, right? Yeah. So little by little, you, you introduce the person step by step. Because you're not going to come to a, uh, to a person, hey, you want to serve the devil? It's not, not going to work. Yeah. So but you entice the young people by offering them free drugs and free sex and, right. and, and, and all that fun and that fellowship, right? That, right. that belonging. Right. Right. And you said something important. And most of these kids came from broken homes, yes, or the parents were alcoholics, and, and they felt displaced. Right. So you offered them this this family supposedly right. that gave them all this pleasure, but and you didn't say it was Satan at first. You would no, just sir. tell them it was just to have fun and mm -hmm. to have all this. And, and what would happen when you would present Satan to them? At well, one point, you had to I, do that. I give you one. I give you one instance. We were watching a, a show in the, on the, on cable, and it was talking about self style Satanism, right? And those three of those four guys with us, right? And, and, and my friend, my best friend, Pete Castro, told me, that's the same things that we do. I told him, listen, dude, we are Satanists. You know what he said? Fine, okay. Fine. So we keep going forward. Yeah. Now, I understand you guys are going to cemeteries. And, yes. And, yeah. uh, and the devil would demand from you a certain thing. What was it he would demand from you? Souls. Souls and... Uh, Blood sacrifices. And yes, we would. We would. Uh, um, I had a, a, a great thirst for blood, especially human blood. If I could not get it from my friends, I would cut myself and take blood out. The kids would cut themselves and stuff like yeah, that. Some of us would. You yeah. know, I, I I think about this and I say, wow. As parents, you know, I don't get it. I don't get it when parents say, well, my kids have privacy and I can't go into their stuff. And I don't get that. Your kids are teenagers, man. You're responsible for your right. children. If kids right. would have, I, I say this, if the parents, and you know, I hate to blame anybody, but if the parents of the kids that killed all these kids in Columbine would have gone into their bedroom and investigated them. Let me tell you, I raised three kids, and you know what they call me? They call me a detective, man, <laughs> because I wouldn't let my kids get away with anything. They want privacy, let them move out and pay their own rent. You know, but the parents, you, I mean, you got to go into your kids' bedrooms. Yeah. You got to you gotta investigate your children, man. You are right. responsible. I don't understand how parents say, well, I don't want to invade my kids' privacy, you know. Right. And, and they're worshiping the devil. They're doing these, all these crazy yeah. stuff in their room. And the parents are oblivious. Right. You know, and we're responsible. Right. You know, so here the, these, this place, children, they put their trust in you. You're taking them to Satanism to, to do all these horrible things that I don't even want to go into detail because the little I mentioned is enough, yeah. all right? 
Uh, now, what happened that, that you turned away from that? Uh, I want you to just share with us the journey from Satanism to Jesus, because it's a big difference. Amen, amen. Um, I end up in the hospital, right, from the drugs and the alcohol. I mess my heart up, and I end up in the, in the, in the hospital. So because of the drugs and the alcohol and the, uh, the abuse, the you ended up in a hospital. And I understand you tried to join the army, and, and they said... Right. That you have a heart of a, what, 80-year-old man? Right. I had an old heart. An old I heart. Had, and they right. didn't take you because they thought you were going to die any, no, any minute. No, I did go to the Army. I had to leave. I you got had to sick. Leave. Okay. Because my heart was all messed up. Then I came back to Florida. Now, did you even care that you were about to die, that your heart was messed up? Th would the devil convince you that that, that that was good, that that was all right? No, I didn't. I, Pastor, I didn't care. We used you, to say it's better to burn out than to fade away. I mean, we didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care. And, and let me ask you something before you, uh, and I know I asked you the first question and you're answering me that first question, but I want to ask you something about how many kids you think you were able to recruit into that lifestyle of Satanism? Pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I really uh, ballpark don't. figure, 30, I mean, maybe, 20? Maybe, maybe 20 or 30. Yeah. You know? I, just, we used, I just started them, you know, I showed them, I used to do a little trick with, with, the, with the kids. I would step on the ground real hard. And, I, and, I'll t and I'll tell Satan, bring me a case of beer, or Satan, bring me some drugs, and somebody would come. And knock on the door. And knock on the and door. And bring you the drugs. And the kids would wonder, how you do that, dude? And I right. said, this is the reason. So he gave you that power, you know, that right. the kids w really right. liked it. And, and the fact that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of our kids listen to heavy metal, and they don't realize that a lot of those lyrics and a lot of those enchantments are incantations, satanic, right. and how these things have affected their lives. Right. So you were saying you were in a hospital? I, just, I, had a, I, was, I went to the hospital in an emergency. I had a heart problem. And I stood in the hospital for a week because my heart was all messed up. Right? The doctor told me, if you don't stop doing drugs, cocaine, rock, whatever you're doing, you're going to die. You're not going to make it past 25. I don't really care. I told him I don't really care anyway. It was a big deal. Anyway, I left the hospital. I kept doing my drugs just in that. And, and, uh, and all, all kinds of stuff for that, all right? And um, I mean, I, just, I, just, I didn't really care about living anymore. I just don't, I don't, I was tired of living. Anyway, one day, one night, I went to my mother's house. My mom had to throw me out of the house because I was doing real bad things inside the house. I was smoking dope. I was doing stuff with different people. My mom was a, my mom was a Christian woman, a real Christian woman. And she could not take it anymore, so she had to throw me out of the house. And um, I, w I went to live with my, my aunt. And uh, I started having problems with my aunt's house, too, because I was doing the, the, the things with the blood and, 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 and the drink and this and that. But one night, when I was coming back from, the, from, a, from a party, I looked to my mom's house. And there was somebody standing in front of my mother's house, some big, tall, and I, an outline of the of a person, of a man, or a tall, big man. Like, like a standing guard in right in front, front of, of your mother's front, house. Front of mother's Th door. Did you have bad intentions when you went to your mother's house that day? No, I was so high, I couldn't even walk straight. But I saw that thing there, and that kind of, that's kind of weird. Anyway, I, I kept walking. But the next day I woke up, I said, man, that's, 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 that was, that's a crazy thing. Okay, let, let's hold that thought. I, I, I want to introduce uh, Arlene once again for a song, but, uh, I want you to stay tuned because this is, uh, you want to hear this, how this young man, bound by drugs and Satanism, became a born-again lover of Jesus Christ. You, you don't want to miss this. And I want Sister Arlene to take the stage, and she's going to sing the Revelation song. So let's hear it for Sister Arlene Pabon, and be blessed with this powerful song.
Praise the Lord. Amen. For those of you that just tuned in, I'm talking to Edwin Kais. He was a young man that at 12 years old started messing with the Ouija board, the tarot cards. He thought it was fun. And uh, shockingly, our society, they have these toys in our toy shops, uh, which are things that are, shouldn't be messed with. And he started uh, listening to hard rock metal music and introduced him to, to Satanism. He hated God. He hated his parents. There was a divorce in his home. He started uh, worshiping the devil, giving him his blood, giving him his service, uh, uh, it, recruiting other kids that were uh, homeless or that were without family, without connections in society. They became a satanic family, did horrible things. And, you know, I don't like to talk about the things that are done in darkness. The Bible says don't even speak about these things. But sometimes with just talking about it just a little bit, you get an idea. Uh, the thing about it is there's some people that are even listening right now that say Satan doesn't exist. Uh, this is a lie. But you know, there is evil in this world. But praise God, there's also good. The antidote to evil is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I thank God for his son. That is worthy. That is the Lamb of God. And Brother Edwin was just about to tell us how he became a, a Christian from a Satan, God-hater, Satanist, hated his mom, hated his family. And now he's a man of God, loves Jesus Christ, and is free from drugs and free from evil. And how did it happen? Because you see, the same God that set him free can set you free. The Bible says God has no exception, has, the, the, does not have any exception, doesn't respect, not a respect of any person. He will do with you what he's done with him. And I want you to listen very carefully because God is alive and he can change your life too. Amen. So Amen. Brother Edwin, you were saying you were at the hospital you left the hospital, you, your heart was down, the doctor said you're going to die, you said you didn't care, and you were on your way to your mother's house, and you saw this great figure like a guard in front of her house. Exactly, Pastor. That, I, I, that first time I saw him, I was all real high and all messed up. The second, the second day, I said, I'm not going to do any, no, no drugs, I ain't going to do nothing, I'm going to go straight. But at the same time, I'm going to see what, what's going on here. It's kind of strange. So you thought that the man you saw was probably was uh, because of the drugs. The, the, yeah, the, it, it could, you know, that's possible. Uh, I'm you thinking, were hallucinating. Maybe I was seeing things. I mean, I was, I was used to seeing demons and, and all kinds of crazy stuff, but not that, not that person. I landed from somebody's house. So you, 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 were see, you used to see demons. I yes, mean, sir. the devil revealed himself to you. Yes, sir. You were used to all that. But the figure you saw in front of our house was different. Whole, I mean, completely different. Something, di there was something different about that, that person there. I kind of got my attention. Anyway, I came back the next night. I went, I went to my mother's house again. Guess what? He was right there again. And I was, well, that's, 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 that's kind of weird. Anyway, I approached my mom's house. I jumped the fence and I fell flat on the ground. Something, I could not get up. Something kept holding me down. I tried to go forward. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do anything. I just, some, something was holding me down against the ground. So I said, that's, that's, I mean, that's, I was confused. So let, let me go, let me go, let me go. I jumped the fence again, came back again, ran over the fence, jumped again. That happened a couple times, and right? The, and it, something kept holding you this, back on the floor. Yeah, he didn't move, he didn't do nothing. He was just standing there. Yeah. And just, I just kept hitting the floor. I could not move, I couldn't <laughs> do nothing. Anyway, I said, I know, I know what's going on now. I understand. You protected my mother, and you don't want me to go inside the house. Guess what? I I'm going to come back. I went to my favorite place, the cemetery. Started calling all kinds of demons, calling on the name of Satan, Lucifer. I mean, when I left the cemetery, I didn't leave alone. I went inside alone, but I didn't leave alone. I mean, I, I was running with other, other things, spirits, to my mother's house. When I got to my mother's house, again, he was right there, standing. They moved, he didn't move even a single inch. But when I look back, my friends were moving back. <laughs> they didn't want a part of that All single All the person. demonic hosts that were with you didn't want to approach yes, that, that figure. That never happened before. Uh -huh. Never. The, the devil was, uh, told me that it was all powerful. The demons told me there were nobody could uh, withstand their strength. But when they saw that person in front of my mother's house, they didn't want a part of him. So I told, I told the, the, uh, the demon, you can guys can go to, you can go to uh, heck. No, not, not, not really that word, but some other word, right? And I went against that thing again, all right? I ran, I jumped the fence, and again, I fell on the floor. Flat on the floor. I could not move. I could not move. Yeah. 
I, 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 I told him again, let me go. He let me go. I started running. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut the, the, you know, I'm going to go real fast now. And, and then I, I started running and started screaming because, my God, this thing defeated me. So you were mad? Oh, yeah. I, you were angry that you found something that was more powerful than what the devil had told you, that exactly. you had all power. All of a sudden, you found out the devil lied to you. Yes, sir. I There's was, a power that is greater. Yes, sir. And that got you pretty upset. I mean, I was lit up. I mean, I was, I was real mad. I mean, I was embarrassed. I was shamed. I mean, I was defeated. So I left running the other way. All right? When I was running across my, my brother Rosal's house, the same man was in front of his door. Same exact person in front of Brother Rosal's house. When I kept running, screaming at the top of my lungs, and I ran uh, 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 to my sister's house. To your sister's house? Yeah. I looked at my sister's house. The same man was in front of the door. And your sister had gotten saved, right? My sister was a Christian. So that same man was at the door that was in your mother's house. Right. So you, you, you're thinking, there's something going on here. So huh? I was screaming. Then I understood. I started screaming at the top of my lungs. I know who you are. You are God. And I came into, into my senses. Then I started laughing. It's God. And I started crying. And I went back to the cemetery. And I messed myself up in the cemetery, punching the tomb, because I got defeated. All right? You and felt like you were deceived. I was this, I just said, wow, well, I'm a fool. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dummy. All right? Then I, I'm punching the tombstones. The tombstones oh, my God, what, what, I mean, what have I done? This and that. Then I, I started remembering the, 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 remembering the, 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 the Bible school. I started remembering the, the, the church. I started remembering the messages because my mom raised me in church, but I got, I got out of church. And I started remembering the Word of God, and that, that made me more angry. Oh my God, what have I done? All right. But I didn't repent. I became. I started drinking more, more alcohol. I started doing more drugs. You said what? I'm defeated. I mean, might as well just kill myself. I slit my wrist. I just kept doing more, more, more drugs. It was so much drugs I was doing that my friends, my best friends, didn't want no part of me. So that guy is going crazy. That guy is he's going to blow up one of his days and, and forget about it. He just, just let's leave, leave him alone. So you were doing hard drugs? Hard drugs. Crack, everything, heroin? Everything. 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 I, didn't, I stopped eating. I stopped drinking. I just kept. You wanted drugs. to die. You, yeah, you I wanted, wanted to die. die. I mean, for, I mean, for what? I mean, I just got defeated. You had nothing to live for. And not, that's it. I was, I was done already. Anyway, my, like I said, my friend just stood away from me. I was in the car uh, one night in, in, in a party. I was drinking my Jack Daniels and bleeding out of my mouth, my nose, because I had problems, uh, internal problems already. All right, and smoking my pot and, and just. Wasting away. Then I heard that familiar, vo that familiar voice that told me, kill yourself. Because if you when you say familiar voice, you mean that the Satan? Yes, sir. He just the told voice. you to kill yourself. Why? Because you're going to go to church tomorrow. The devil told you, kill yourself today because tomorrow you're going to go to God church. is going to be calling you. Right. That basically. Kill yourself and because you're going to go to church tomorrow. I said, I ain't going to another church. All right. I got out of my car. I went and talked to my friends. I told, him, I told my friends. To the Satanist group, to the Coven. Yeah, they're all there having the little party, right? I went over there. I want to die. I want you guys to kill me. So you told your guys to beat you up, right. to kill you, because yeah. tomorrow you wouldn't get saved and you didn't want to get saved. Exactly, right? I don't know what happened because it was a big old fight. Uh, all I know that I, I, when I woke up, I was in, my, in front of my mother's house in my car. Beaten up. All busted up, right? Beating up my nose. That's so crooked. they tried the they, they tried their best to, beat, oh, yeah, to they, kill you. They gave me a nice little beating. So man. there's no love in that place. No, sir. They just they just went ahead and yeah. did it, right? <laughs> anyway, when 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 the sun was hitting my eyes, that's when I woke up. At that instant, my mom came and my sister, and they saw me in the car. My mom went over there crying. I could not understand that part, why she was crying. I mean, in my heart, there was no love, there was no compassion, there was no mercy. I mean, I just, all I knew was drugs. And hate. And hate, all right? And, and my mom, like a mom, took me out of the car, my sister crying, they put me inside the house, they cleaned my wounds, and my mom crying, my sister crying, and I kept, why are these people crying? 
I mean, why cry? All right. My mom left the room, and my sister, they let me in the room there. And I, I was sitting there and thinking, the first thing I'm going to do when I can walk, I'm going to a, I'm gonna go to a pawn shop, I'm going to buy me a gun, and I'm going to blow my brains out because I'm tired of this already. I'm 25 years old, and I feel like I'm 100. I had enough. But something wonderful happened there. A voice started speaking to me. I heard, I heard my name being spoken, Edwin. By a very different voice. A very different voice. A soft voice. and tender voice. A beautiful voice. That you never heard before. Edwin. Edwin. And I said, and I said, I looked around on the bed, I looked around the best I could, and, and, and I said, who is it? Hallelujah. And I said, the voice said, it is me. It is me, your God. Oh, Pastor, when I heard that voice and I heard those words, my God, I started cursing the Lord in Spanish and in English. If I knew Chinese, I would have cursed him out in Chinese. I mean, I went crazy screaming. I don't know how my mom didn't hear anything that happened, but I was scream, screaming up. Cursing at God. Cursing at God, blaming him for this and blaming him for that. No, you this and you that and all this stuff. We were there for a while. I mean, I was just screaming at him. But what messed me up, all right, what sh shocked me was that after I was cursing, cursing God, he said, Edwin, I love you. Hmm. And that just disarmed me, took Amen. away the defense, took away the anger, took away everything. And I said, Lord, but how, how, how can you love me? Look at me. I'm not a man, I'm an animal. I drink blood, I kill animals, I worship Satan, I do this, I do that. He said, I love you. Amen? And, and I thought, Lord, Lord, look, I'm sick. Look at my heart. I can give you a new heart. Amen. Lord, look, look, look the way I am. I can give you a new life. All you got to do is accept me as your Lord and Savior, and I can do it. I got up out of my bed the best way I could. I got on my knees Amen. and I started calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you that I felt something wonderful all over myself, Amen. warm. And I said to Jesus Christ and I asked him for all for the forgiveness of my sins. And now I know you can go on for another oh, half yeah. hour. God gave you a new heart. Yes, sir. He healed your heart. Yes, he did. The doctor now says your heart is like a, a baby. Yes, sir. He set you free from drugs. And I just want to encourage, first of all, I want to encourage all those mothers that are out there. Amen. I mean, I'm sure your mother prayed for you, man. And sometimes, you know, your son is lost and your children are doing horrible things and you want to lose faith. But moms, keep praying for your kids. I mean, he's here because of the prayers of his mother. Amen. And the prayers of his family. So don't get discouraged. No matter how lost and how dark it seems, just believe God. Believe God for your children fight for their souls in prayer. And for those of you that don't know Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. The Bible says we loved him because he loved us first. Amen. And that's something that we need to understand. And I want to thank you, Edwin, for being with us today. And uh, I think we're going to have one more song by Sister Arlene Pabon. And she's going to sing Because of Who You Are. And again, let's hear it for Sister Arlene Pabon. <laughs> Because 
because of who you are, I give, I give you the glory, yes I do. Say Jehovah Jireh. You are. 